January 28, 1969, um, an offshore oil well off the coast of the U.S. city of uh, Santa Barbara, um, I think it was operated by um, Union Oil, uh, blew up. I told you it wasn't going to be fun. Um, Three million gallons of oil spilled out of the ocean, uh, killing about 10,000 seabirds, marine animals, and such. Eyewitnesses later described the scene as the bottom of the ocean had exploded. Think of that image for a second. The ocean was boiling. Around that time, um, U.S. Senator uh, A. Lord Nelson, he was uh, traveling uh, for a flight, uh, for a meeting, uh, on a flight from LA, Los Angeles, to San Francisco. And he happened to fly over this 800 square mile oil slip. And he looked out of his airplane window and uh, onto the devastation that was unfolding below him. And he had an idea. Stepping back, around that time, um, the Vietnam War was going on. And what the US government was doing was it was sending out these representatives to local communities uh, and such to hold these community engagement forums and, and town halls, which they called Teach Ins. Uh, and it was basically to educate the public and encourage them to uh, reduce their consumption and save on resources and energy and such. So Senator Nelson had this idea that why don't we have this day where across the country we have these teachings, uh, specifically at college campuses, where people will talk about the importance of conserving the environment. All of this led him, Senator Nelson, on April 22, 1970, a year later, to create the world's first birthday. I'm sure all of us have heard of birthday now. Countries across the globe market in their own uh, special unique ways, and it's become part of our cultural ethos as well. It, although the origins of the phrase are not entirely uh, uh, clear, but it is widely accepted that it was during that first birthday that this phrase, the three R's, recycled, reduced, reuse, came into being. I think I was in the fourth grade when I was first taught this phrase at school, and uh, like a lot of my kids, you know, it kind of became my Bible. <laughs> we memorized it, we internalized it, we believed in it. You know, the, the most effective lies are the simplest ones because they're catchy. You know? they're, they're attractive in their simplicity. <laughs> seductive, almost. This was the same. But it would take me another 15 years of my professional journey before I realized just how destructive this myth, this lie of the three R's really was. And how corporations and vested interests had taken hold of a very pure motive with a very pure origin story and had twisted it according to their own motives of profit and gain. I have been working in the field of sustainability and energy for most of my adult life. While that's not a lot of years, um, still young. Uh, <laughs> um, but I have done things, you know, and I've been across the world. I've been in this movement for some time now. I've worked, I've been lucky enough to work at high levels in large corporate organizations, traditional bureaucratic firms. I have um, started my own company, uh, tried to have impact from the outside, from outside the corporate machine. Uh, I've been a part of um, a large number of environmental organizations across the world, uh, trying to have, just, just trying to have some impact in any shape or way possible. My work, has been awarded internationally, I've been accoladed, I've been honored, such as today. But I stand here today before you with this great and humbling realization that I haven't been able to have one iota of impact. I believe, I strongly believe, that the reason the needle moves so slowly in terms of having impact in, in my industry, and I, I think I talk for a lot of people who work in this realm, are the lies that have been so strategically placed in our path that obstruct the view of the truth. I don't believe that I can start having impact in sustainability until I have a constructive discussion with you about what those lies are 
And before we start dismantling them, we cannot get on a road to a real sustainable future. So let's take one of those guys today. Recycling. <clears throat> it's my favorite. Um, you turn on the TV, you watch any news network or TikTok show or TV show. Uh, whenever the, the topic of sustainability comes on, and you know, uh, you'll always see these talking heads, uh, this popular refrain, this, this, this very popular advice, oh, you can just recycle it. Um, okay, sounds like a good idea, let's explore that. Um, recycling is nearly a national pastime in Germany. It is so embedded in the national consciousness of Germany, they're so proud of their system. It's very strict, it's very good, it's very efficient, like all German things. They have uh, a blue bin for paper. Uh, they have I think, green and brown for biodegradables. Uh, I think they have yellow for plastic and black for the rest of your trash. And in fact, they're so proud of it. It's a funny thing. Um, if you read their children's books, like you know the popular tales for children in school and everything, these colored bins actually make an appearance in, in popular children's folklore as well. Um, and indeed, they have done a better job than any of the other countries that I know of. Uh, the World Economic Forum in 2017 hailed Germany as the global recycling champions. But expert studies have been conducted and it suggests that there's something missing there. Germany reports, uh, for plastic packaging for example, Germany reports a 50% recycling rate. Experts suggest it's closer to 38%. That's a big gap when you really think about how much trash a country like Germany produces. Um, Germany produces, I think, 3 million tons of plastic packaging waste every year. So, you know, 12% of that is a bit. I got 34 in math, uh, so I'm not really good, I'm not going to calculate that for you, but if any one of you can do that, I shall it uh, But it's a lot. Um, my point is, why did a country that really championed the recycling practice in the world, how did it fail so badly? Because even if we take them at their work, which is 50%, it's kind of odd, don't you think? Like, when you take a water bottle and you put it in the recycling bin, you don't expect half of it to be recycled, you expect all of it to be recycled. So what's going on there? Right? There's a lot of problems there. Um, some social, some scientific, some technological, some business. Let's talk about one of the major ones. Um, for a lay person, uh, plastic is plastic. If I see a plastic bottle and I want to recycle it, throw it into a recycling trash can, uh, which is, I think is the yellow colored one. However, to a recycling plant, there's seven different grades of plastic. So, Let's take an example. I see a plastic water bottle right there. And I'm sure if you look at it, there's going to be a recycling stamp on it. Right? So a consumer is in know. But that the bottle, the, the body of the bottle is recyclable, but the cap, I can assure you, is not. Right? Do they tell us that when they mark their products with recyclable stamps and they market it as such? No. Okay, let's talk about pizza. Um, yeah, this is the only good part of my talk. Uh, <laughs> No, how, how many of you have had pizza in the last week or so? Okay, uh, really shouldn't get smart at um, But uh, pizza comes in what? A cardboard box, right? That's biodegradable. That's 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 recyclable, right? Uh, sorry to bust your bubble, because cardboard that is contaminated with food waste or oil or grease is not recyclable. In fact, when the pizza comes to you and you open it and the cheese is sticking to the lid, it's already non-recyclable. There's nothing you can do as a consumer. So, my point is, instead of actually individually sorting through each piece of trash that they get, in the millions of tons of trash that they get, recycling plants and it's just cheaper and easier for them to throw the whole thing out rather than individually sort through these pieces of trash, right? In fact, the truth is, I think, I might be wrong about this, but I think 79%, a majority, of all the plastic that has ever been produced. I'll just take a second, I'll pause here, just, just imagine that. Since plastic started being produced as man-made material, did it? 79% of that has not been recycled. It's lying in a landfill somewhere, it's been tossed out into the world, into a sea, into our forests, it's been burnt. And yet, companies market themselves as green. Anyway, um, let's let's dive back a little bit. I'll move on to um, I'll move on to something something more. It's, it's another story. It's a little story. Um, 
you might be asking at this point, then if if, if, if plastic recycling is such a sham, it's such a farce, then why is it so popular? Why does it have such good PR? Uh, well, let's go back to the 1970s. Uh, during that time, when this phrase came out, this, the recycle reuse uh, movement came out, uh, a lot of money and a lot of effort was put in by a lot of plastic manufacturing companies into generating goodwill and creating a good image for plastic recycling. Because that, they realized what they want, would give them a very good method of pushing more plastic products into the system. There was a competition aimed at kids, really, um, in the US um, around that time, where, uh, you know, it happened locally at, at the community level, neighborhood level, where uh, the kids who would design the best receptacle or like, like a trash can, best design trash can, um, so that the neighborhood people could come and dispose of their plastic waste so it could be recycled. Uh, they, that kid would win a prize or some money or something like that. Fantastic, right? Getting kids to do something good for the environment, good for the world. Heartwarming story, until you realize who was behind that competition. It was funded by this project which was called A Bag's Life, uh, which I think is a fun one about like the movie. Um, and it was funded by uh, American Progressive Bag Alliance, which is a lobbying group which uh, funnels millions of dollars into lobbying against efforts to reduce plastic packaging in the industry. Hmm. A vast corporation with a lot of money making use of something to target children for their own <laughs> profit. Does that sound familiar? Something about the title of the stock. Um, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on to the second R. Um, re reuse. But keep it simple. They, the way we consume today and the way products are manufactured today, there just isn't a lot that you can reuse. Think about it. Has everyone come across a, a mother daily milk pouch? Right? Every single one? Yep. Safe to assume. How do you reuse that? How does a common everyday man or woman reuse a mother daily or any brand milk pouch that's once when it's been cut open and the milk has just out? For that matter, how do you reuse an empty hairspray can? Or a deodorant can? How do you reuse the energy that you just spent flying from Mumbai to Delhi? Fun fact. Um, if I'm calculating this correctly, uh, I think you would have to actually recycle 40,000 uh, plastic water bottles just like that to offset the energy that you spent on a flight from Mumbai to Delhi. 40,000. Uh, one per day is 365 a year. Do the math. Long lives. Uh, anyway. Also, there's stuff that you can't, you shouldn't reuse. Like the plastic water bottles again. Star of our show today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, over time, overuse, if you keep reusing them, keep rewashing them, refilling them in the water, what happens is that there's normal wear and tear in the molecular structure and it breaks apart and it leaches chemicals, harmful chemicals, like BPA, uh, might have heard of it, into the water. And you like said, BPA has been linked to uh, cancer, it's been linked to uh, developing disorders in children. So, how do you reuse that after knowing that? You can't. Okay. I just, I just have to come back to this. Over the course of my career, I realized that there's only one, one true R. This just leaves us with one true R, which is reduce. The reason I say that is we, we just cannot recycle or reuse our way out of this mess that we've created for ourselves. You know, we have to, we have to reduce the consumption. We have to reduce our footprint and our impact on the planet. It is the only road to a sustainable future. We simply cannot rely on the other two hours. They either don't exist or they are lies which actually cause more harm than good. Let's do away with another lie while we're at it. Your people will always tell you that, oh, uh, reducing consumption, huh? that's against development, right? You need to find better alternatives. Uh, you're not really developed if you're looking at, you know, you're going back into the past, you're using less stuff, uh, modern stuff is cool, it's good. We are currently consuming 1.7 Earth's worth of resources. Let me ask you this question. If a man came up to you and said, um, however much ba ba balance you have in your bank, you need to spend 1.7 times of that, otherwise you're not developed. It's 
Safe to say that that man doesn't have your best interests at heart. Or, you know, they're your credit card company. I'm sorry, it's just a joke. If there's any banking lawyers here, don't sue me. In their thunder, not fun. Um, anyway, moving on. The, the, the point is, right, we are at a precipice in, in, in our journey, right? And, and ingenious marketing, deceitful social campaigns have been hijacked by these companies with a lot of resources and you know they've, they've shifted the blame of pollution, tackling the energy crisis, finding sustainable alternatives onto you, the consumers. All of this, why, mind you, 71% of all the greenhouse global gas emissions since 1988 can be tracked down to just 100 companies in the world. Not you, not me, them. But they've made us believe that we're the villains because we used a plastic bottle. But they, they create a world where there is no alternative. So I, I submit to you, it is time to see through their lies. It is time where we push the responsibility back where it belongs. To do that, the first step would be to take our money away from them. It would be to reduce our consumption. It's the only way. Reduce your consumption of unsustainable materials. Ask them to think of a better way to market their materials. Make better materials, make better products, make less products, but better products. In 2018, I was having a great time. I was at a great place in my life. I had a great high-flying corporate job. I was, uh, I think I just got put onto the Forbes list. Uh, Spending a lot of money. It's a good life. I was in the US. One fine day, I woke up and quit my job. And I started my own company. I tried to do something outside. Why? Because I realized that I could not live another day where I was blind and I was playing into a system. I was supporting a system that left the world a worse place than I found it. I could not be a part of that. But in the journey since then, I realized two things. The first thing, is that I do not miss Microsoft Outlook. Horrible piece of software. Please do something about it. Second thing, I can't do this by myself. Right? Which is why I'm here. I'm here to talk to you. I hope that the next time you're talking with your friends and families, you tell them these stories. You tell them these facts. I hope that the next time uh, this brand advertisement comes on television and then they talk about how they're turning green because the products are now recyclable. I hope you go, you the anger bubbles up from inside you and you go lies. I hope you do that. I can't do this by myself. Because the first step is to kill the lies. Because when you kill the lies, you see the truth. The horrifying, the scary, disgusting truth of the situation, the state of sustainability right now which is being masked over so well, so beautifully. I hope you see the truth. Because the truth, no matter how scary, no matter how depressing, unfailingly, unflinchingly always gives rise to one thing, which is hope. Hope that we can change. Hope that we can reduce our consumption. It's about hope. It's about talking about it, raising the hope. Because the hope is a beautiful thing. The truth, however inconvenient, leads to a beautiful thing. It is hope alone that pushes the human race forward since time immemorial. The theme for today is co -wise. Where are we headed? I do believe that once we're done with all the lies, once we see through all the lies, we can honestly say, forward towards an actually sustainable future. Thank you so much.